hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, so today is the 10th day of this prayer meeting, and um, we are going to be continuing from where we stopped in Ephesians 3, verse 17. Amen to Jesus. And um, today we are going to be focusing on that aspect of this verse of scripture. And the scripture says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in law, amen to Jesus, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in law, Ephesians 3, verse 17. Now, last um, yesterday and two days ago, we stayed on Christ dwelling in our hearts by faith. Amen to Jesus. We're able to study on that a little to praise God and then get prayers in line with this first part of this verse of scripture. Today, we're going to be entering the second part of this um, verse of scripture and uh, because it's also important for us as followers of the Lord Jesus as sons of God who, who must manifest on the earth. Amen to Jesus. Now, the end result and proof that Christ dwells in us is that we are rooted and grounded in love. Amen to Jesus. The end result and the proof that Christ dwells in us is that we are rooted and grounded in love. Now, most times Christians believe that the proof that Christ dwells in us is that we know many Bible verses, we speak in tongues, we are spiritual, we are sensitive, we perform signs and wonders, we heal the sick, and the list goes on. Amen to Jesus. Now, this we believe that Christ dwells in us when we perform every of these kind of things. When we pray in tongues, we heal the sick, we raise the dead, oh, the signs and wonders follow us, praise God forevermore. And say, yes, actually Christ is dwelling in me. I'm walking in the miraculous. I'm performing signs and wonders. I'm healing the sick. I'm raising the dead. Oh, great things are happening to me. And that is the basis on which we, we, we define ourselves that Christ dwells in us. Amen to Jesus. But the actual um, fact is that this is not the truth. Amen. This is not the truth. Amen. Now, manifestations of signs and wonders, um, proofs, and every of that. Amen to Jesus. Manifestations of the great things that we, we look for in the Christian faith, they are just simply proofs that we want, that we believe in Jesus. Amen. And newborn babes in Christ can do this. Praise the Lord forevermore. In fact, actually, these signs and wonders are actually for newborn babes in Christ. Amen to Jesus. Because there are signs to show that we believe in Christ. The Bible says in Mark chapter 16, verse 17, says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. This sign shall follow them that believe. So anyone who believes, this sign follows you. So long as you believe that Jesus is Lord, he died and he resurrected, he's, he's God and he's Lord of all, and he, 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 he's a conquering king. So long as you believe it in, in Jesus and his finished work, these signs are meant to follow you. You are not to follow them. They are meant to follow you. You are not to cry for them. You are not to pray for them. You are not to fast for them. They are meant to follow you. Um, over the years, some of us have been made to believe that you, for you to work in the supernatural, you have to fast. You have to pray. You have to cry for it. You have to yearn for it. Yes, those are good teachings, but the actual fact is that do you cry for something that follows you? Do you yearn? Do you, do you, do you fast and pray for something that follows you? Do you yearn for something that follows you? Praise God forevermore. Actually, if there's anything we have to fast and pray for, it's for the things that we are following. Are we together? And that's actually Jesus. We follow Jesus. Praise God forevermore. Now, so but for miracle signs and wonders, we are not to fast and pray for them, we are not to yearn for them, we are not to cry for them. They are things that are meant to follow us. And these are just the signs to show that we believe in Jesus. Praise God forevermore. And amen to Jesus. And these signs are actually meant for, let me use the word, newborn babes in the Lord Jesus. Why? Because it is easier for babies to believe, babies and toddlers, it's easier for them to believe their parents than for adolescents and adults to believe their parents. Is that not so? Now, when I was a child, I used to ask my dad to buy me an aeroplane and he'd tell me he'd buy. He used to tell me he'd buy. And believe me, I believe my dad with all my heart that he would buy me the aeroplane. Praise God forevermore. Now, that's a child, that's a, that's a childlike mind. The childlike mind believes everything the father says, believes everything the mother says. Now, that is the kind of mind that God even wants us to have. The childlike mind, praise God forevermore. The newborn babe mind. As a newborn babe, you are meant to believe everything that God says. And as you grow, you are meant to believe in God. The funny thing is that as we begin to grow in our work with God, some of us become more rational than worse than dependent on God. Praise God. Some of us become more analytical than faithful. Praise the Lord forevermore. And then as, 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 as we 
get older in 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 our in our in our faith, some of us yeah. begin to begin to behave like adolescents and youths. That's why we can begin to analyze the word of God and, and cross check the word of God to be sure if the word of God is actually true. Amen to Jesus. But for a child, the child does not analyze or cross check the words of their peer, of, of, his, of his parents. Praise God. The, the toddler does not do that. The baby does not do that. They just believe what their parents tell them. Amen to Jesus. And so signs and wonders is the sign of anyone who has a childlike faith in God. Amen to Jesus. So it, it's, it's meant to be just a normal operation because when the baby is born by the mother, the next thing the baby does is to trust the mother to give it food. Is that not so? And so that's all it does. And it starts, you see the baby with, even with the eyes still closed, start nosing around for the, mother's, uh, for, for, for the mother to give it food. Why? Because he believes, oh, I, I trust you that if you could give it to me, you have what it takes to want to feed me. And this is the kind of faith that God really wants from us. Amen to Jesus. And this is the kind of faith that what that attracts what signs and wonders. So miracle signs and wonders are meant to follow every newborn child of God and everyone who has a childlike faith, a childlike mind, uh, 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 faith, faith mindset in God. Amen to Jesus. Mark chapter 16, verse 17 says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. It follows us. You believe, it follows you. Praise God forevermore. So it's easier for toddlers to believe because they have the childlike mind. Amen. Praise the Lord forevermore. Now, the, but this is not the proof that Christ is dwelling in you. Signs and wonders, miracles, they are not the proof that Christ is dwelling in you. Signs and wonders are the proof that you believe Christ like a child. Amen. You have the childlike faith in Christ. That's the proof. But it's not the proof that Christ dwells in you. The proof that Christ dwells in a sense is what? Perfection. In other words, maturity. Maturity. The first proof to show that Christ indwells a sense is what? Perfection. That is what? Maturity. And then the proof of perfection, that is maturity, is not signs and wonders. Are we together? It's not signs and wonders. We learned that the proof that Christ draws to you is not signs and wonders. Signs and wonders are the proof that you want. You have a childlike faith in God. You believe God. That is what's the proof. Of, the proof of your believing God is signs and wonders. But the proof that Christ draws to you is what? It's maturity. It's perfection. Amen. And the proof of perfection is not signs and wonders. Some of the time we mistake signs and wonders for maturity. Oh, that guy is walking in the miraculous, he's performing signs and all that. So he's mature in the Lord. No, it may not necessarily be. Are you understand what I'm saying? It's meant to follow every one of us. The proof of perfection, the proof of maturity is what? Love. It's love. Are we together? It's love. That's the proof of maturity. It's love. It's love. It's no miracle signs and all that. Paul went for that to say, if I if, if I speak in tongues of men and of angels and I have no luck, I'm like a clashing and, 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 and noise-making simba. He said, if I, if I give my body to be burnt and, and I have no luck, he said, it's just a waste exercise. If I give all I have to the poor and I have no luck, it is a waste of time. That makes us understand that all the seemingly good and great things that many people post to be proof of what Christ dwelling in them is not actually the proof that Christ is dwelling in us. So we may, be, we may be displaying all these things, but actually Christ is not indwelling you. Maybe walking in the miracle of God, Christ is not yet indwelling you. The proof that Christ is indwelling every one of us as children of God is what? Is love. Amen. First John 4, verse 12 says, No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. You see that? If we love one another, God what dwelleth in us. So the condition to show that God dwells in us is what? If we what? Love one another. So if we don't love one another, it means that God does not what? Dwell in us. And he says what? And his love is perfected in us. So the proof that we love, the proof that God dwells in us is that we love one another. And then when we love one another, his love is perfected in us. Praise God. Amen. So the proof that God dwells in us and we are made perfect in love, is that we love one another. Love, 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 love. Not miracle signs and wonders. Not all the plenty 
gymnastics that we, we, we do in the Christian faith today. Those are not the things that show that we are what? That Christ is dwelling in us. What's the proof that Christ dwells in us? The proof that Christ dwells in us is that what? We love one another. We love one another. We love one another. Love, 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 love. Are, are we together? Love, love, love. And this one subject that we have to keep striking, we have to keep hitting, we have to keep pressing on in the church of God. The dis- division in the church of Jesus, the disunity in the church of Jesus is so is so alarming that sometimes I just kind of like, what's really happening? What's happening? Because we have gone after things. We've gone after miracles. We've gone after science and wonders. We've gone after the proofs that we are we have childlike faith, but we are not going after the proof that Christ draws in us. We've gone after different things, but we have not gone after the proof to show that Christ draws in us. Now, what is love? Now, there's something we must understand that love is neither a feeling, neither is it an emotion. Amen. Love is neither a feeling, neither is it an emotion. But um, feelings and emotion are consequences of love. But you cannot define love with a feeling or an emotion. Praise God forevermore. Now, and that's one of the challenges that most of us have had, even in the Christian law. When we talk about love, we just want to the emotions perspective, we want to the feeling perspective. When you say husband, love your wife, the first thing we think of is, um, is emotions and feelings. But the actual fact is that love is bigger than emotions and feelings. What then is love? First John 5, verse 3, and second John 1, verse 6 gives us understanding of love very well. It says, first John 5, verse 3 says, For this is the love of God. This is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Now let's look at 2 John 1 verse 6. It says, and this is the law. That's defining law. When you say defines, you say this is, and this is law that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as he have heard from the beginning, we should walk in. So what then is love? What then is love? Love is simply what? Keeping and walking after God's commandment. Keeping God's commandment and walking after his commandment. That's what love is all about. Is that a feeling? Is that an emotion? But all of that are inside of it. Are you getting what I'm saying? But it's bigger than a feeling. It's bigger than an emotion. It's about keeping and walking after God's commandment. So everything that walking in his commandment entails is law. Everything that keeping his commandment entails is what? Is law. So anything I have to go through just to keep his commandment and walk in his commandment, whatever it is I'm going to do that, I'm walking in law. <laughs> Are we together? I'm walking in law. I'm living in law. That's the reason why, you see, most of the times we, we've not rightly defined this subject of law. So you see a lot of misunderstandings about the subject of law, especially in the Christian dome. Uh, they just some people just give you one definition. They say this, this, and that, and that, and then they say this is love. And so a lot of people have been confused about love. Love is not about emotions. It's not about even what people think about you, what people say about you. It's not about, in, in quote how you will treat people. Love is about how you treat people from God's perspective. So looking at God in this person, how would I treat God? That's love. And you get what I'm saying. If I'm going to treat God rightly, I'm not treating this person. I'm treating God. So I see God in him and I treat God. So when I treat God rightly, I indirectly, I'm, at the end of the day, I'm treating this person well, rightly. Praise God forevermore. So love is what? Keeping and walking after God's commandment. We must keep this very important. That's the definition of love. Love is not a feeling. And there are different Greek words that are used to explain love. Philos, philandera, philo, philos, philadelphia. Uh, uh, eros, agape, th- those are, those are, let me say, those are expressions of love. But the subject of love in itself is what? Keeping and walking after God's command. That was what Jesus did. He said, that we know God, have I come to you? Keeping and walking after the, the, the commandments of the Father. For this purpose, I came. Walking in the precepts and the commandments of the Father. Walking in the will of the Father. That is love. Are we together? So love is working in the fullness of the will of the Father. So the will of the Father has to be your drive, my drive, our drive. When we walk in the will of the Father, we are walking in love. We are walking in what? In love. That's what it means to live and walk in love. Amen to Jesus. So what does it mean to be rooted in love? The word rooted is from the Greek word 
rizu, and it means to cause to strike root. It means to strengthen its roots. It means to render firm. It means to fix. It means to establish. It means to cause a person or a thing to be thoroughly grounded. Praise God forevermore. Mm -hmm. So to be rooted in love means to, it means to be strengthened with roots in God's commandments. In God's commandments. To be strengthened with roots in God's commandments. Praise God forevermore. Mm -hmm. It means to be firm in God's commandment. To be firm. To be firm. You see, most of the times, Christian, we are so shaped in the commandments of God, in the will of God. When some challenges come, we just lose God. We, we, we just give up on the will of God concerning us. So it means to be firm in the will of God concerning us. Praise God. It means to be fixed in God's commandment. To be fixed. To be fixed. To be fixed. When something is fixed, it's unshakable. Praise God forevermore. It cannot be moved. It cannot be moved. The Bible says we should not be uh, we should not be tossed by every wind of doctrine. You will be tossed by every wind of doctrines when you are not what fixed in the word, in the commandments of God. You are not fixed in the center of God's will now. It means to be established in God's commandments, to be established in God's will. And it means to be totally grounded in God's will, in God's commandments. Are you getting what I'm saying? Thoroughly grounded. Apostle Paul said, say one thing, nothing. So you are so grounded in the will of God that even in your sleep, you know the will of God for your life. Per time, per season. Because the Bible says something, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So the criteria for which you used to love your neighbor is how you love yourself. So it means that if you don't love yourself, if you don't know how to love yourself, you cannot actually know how to what? love your neighbor. So if you don't know God's will for your life, how can you then express that will of God to your neighbor? That's the challenge you're having. I get what I'm saying. A lot of Christians, we don't even know what God's will is for our life. And then we are trying to carry other people alongside with us. When you don't even know the will of God for your life, praise God forevermore. You've not discovered what God is saying concerning you. And then you are trying to extend this, this what you don't know to others. You can't love people when you don't love yourself. You can't love people when you don't know God's will for your life. Mm. You can't love people when you're not rooted, thoroughly, thoroughly, firmly fixed in God's will for your life. So the cry of your heart should be, God, reveal your will to me. Let me know your will, ditto, ditto. Not just trying to be moved by every wind of doctrine. Today you see Christians, today they are this, tomorrow they are that, next tomorrow they are this, next tomorrow they are that. Today they are, they are trusting God, next tomorrow they are trusting man, next tomorrow they are trusting somebody else. They are just, they are just, they are just, they are just, they are just moved by the wind. Why? Because you don't know the will of God. You are not firmly rooted in the will of God for your life. When you are firmly rooted in the will of God for your life, you'll be like the three Hebrew children who said, oh king, on this matter, we will not answer you. Oh Nebuchadnezzar, on this matter, we will not answer you. Even if our God does not save us, we will not bow to your God. Why? Because we know the will of our God for our life. His will is that we do not bow to an idol. And let me help you understand something that in that time and in that city, in that country, in, in that nation of Babylon, there were other Jews that were there, not only the three Hebrew boys. I you know what I'm saying? Not only the three Hebrew boys and that, there were other Jews that were there. But those other Jews, they were bowing down. Why? Because they were not rooted in the will of God for their lives. The love of God is not about emotion. It's about being rooted in the center of God's will. Only when you are rooted in the center of God's will can you extend the will of God to others. Only when you are rooted in the knowledge of God's will for your life can you extend it to others. So you are having a challenge extending it to others because you are not rooted in God's, the knowledge of God's will for your life. I, 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 I you understand what I'm saying? A man who has not learned to love himself cannot love his wife. Praise the Lord forevermore. And that's one thing we have to really Seek after even this year. Amen to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, what does it mean to be grounded in love? The word grounded is a Greek word, temilio. And temilio means to lay the foundation, to found, to make stable, to establish. To be grounded in love means to be grounded, to, to lay foundation in God's commandments, to lay foundation in God's will. Are you understand what I'm saying? A firm foundation in God's will, so that no matter what comes your, your way, you are not shaken. Are you understand what I'm saying? Now, I, I understand what I'm saying a little. I will not say I understand it totally. I understand it a little. Now, 10 years of staying in the center, 11, 12 years of staying in the center of God's will for my life has come with a lot of winds. A lot of winds. A lot of winds. A lot of winds. I remember somebody asking me 
he told me, what is the vision of the ministry? And I told him, raising, complete, raising men into completeness in Christ. And I told him, I penned down this vision 2004. 2004, and he was like, wow. And he said, since then, till now, the vision has remained the same. I see it, it has remained the same, it has never changed. And he told me that is consistency. That can only come when you are what? Fully what? You have a foundation in the will of God for your life. The foundation is not just a, a two a two feet foundation is a sky is it is a full building going down. Are, are you get what I'm saying? If what I penned down 2004 is what I am still carrying out 2021, then you understand that this is not what child's play. Are you get what I'm saying? But the privilege of God is I've been in the teaching ministry for for close to 20 years, teaching God's word in different times and different places. Amen. But this has come with so many winds, so many winds, so many storms. But yet, the Lord has helped me stay rooted, kept my foundation in the center of his will. Child of God, this is not a year to just live life like that. You have to have your foundation in the center of God's will for your life. I get what I'm saying. Nobody can give you that foundation. Nobody can tell you this is the will of God for you. No, 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 no. Anybody tells you that, please, I tell you, go and do a thorough verification with the Holy Spirit. I'm not against prophecy, but no man can prophesy your, 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 the will of God for your life. Only the word of God and the Holy Spirit, which illuminates the word of God, can actually give that to you. Are you getting what I'm saying? And this is a year you have to be sure about it. Praise the Lord. To be, to be grounded in love means to be made stable in God's commandments of love. To be made stable, unshakable, stable. You are stable. You are stable. You are stable. And people look at you and like, with all these challenges around you, you are still disabled. Yes, you are stable in the center of God. You have stuck to what God has said you should do. You have been stable in it. That's it. That's, that's how to, that, that's being grounded in love. And you get what I'm saying? And it means to be established in God's commandments, in God's will, to be established in it, to be well established. Well established in it. And I tell you, every of these comes with depth of revelation and over time of following Jesus. Wow. Are we together? And to be grounded in God's love means to, to, to be found in God's commandments. To be found in God's command. When you are sought for, you'll be found there. When people look for you, you are found there. Anyway, the, 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 the parents of Jesus came back to the temple and like, oh, oh you, you, got, you got us worried. Huh? Three days we've been looking for you. And, and, and we came back to see that you are, in the you are in the temple for three days now. What are, you, what are you, Don't you know we are worried? And Jesus said, do you know that I'll be about my father's what? Business. He was found at the business spot. Are you know what I'm saying? This year, where will they find you? You have to be found in God's will. This year. That's how to work in love. Are you know what I'm saying? That's how to work in love. That's how, that's how to... That's how to know that Christ is dwelling in you. You have to be found in the center of God. You see, see, this it makes us understand that it's not about what people say, these people, they don't, so these pastors, they are not giving, these ones, they don't do this, this one, other. You see, the, 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 the person you are complaining about, the reason why I complain about him is that he's found in the, in the will of God for his life. He's rooted in the will of God for that. He has a foundation in the will of God for his life. And he doesn't have time for any other thing except for that. Are you getting what I'm saying? He's all is given to him. This year, what is your own going to be given to you? Working in love is not giving charity. Apostle Paul said it. If I give all I have, but there's no love, I'm wasting my time. It's not speaking in tongues. It's not binding and casting demons. It's not healing the sick and raising them. No, that's not the place to, to have Christ indwelling you. To have Christ indwelling you means you are what? Keeping God's commandment and working God's command. And that is what is what? Working in love. That's love. That means you are you are you are totally rooted in God's will. What is God's will for you this year? What is God's will for your life? Are you rooted in it? Do you have a solid foundation in it? Are you still just opposing? Are you still jumping up and down? Are you still doing what everybody is doing? Are you still following the crowd? Are you still trying to be everybody? Are you understand what I'm saying? Who are you? What is the will of God? This is the questions you have to ask. Because only when you are rooted and grounded in the will of God for your life can it be evident that Christ is dwelling in you.
you have trained one thing law make me rooted and founded in your word make me rooted and founded in your will make me rooted grounded and founded in your will come on open your mouth and pray kalo zi barande le boshi talande ya da yendele bokuri ya da ritando brikata la babalo sentele kudara ratege dum brandi galande le bosa rikozi branda la bosha tandari badasa lord i am that you help me empower me i receive grace to be rooted and grounded o saria talaba daba to be founded in the center of your will this year elusa karabota la seda rindando kadibaliga do sandra baliato rikete getura kantele beberiada rebe subram baba dia baba do lega de bele bebe de be subra baba rafa la babondria da baba dia kandaria babo dosha lenge gida la botusa rende kira baba do shabarianda rega de lebe do shabadia bogutia regita bonsi gadi balada bamia lokrumba kita randa la baba lokadia dada ba reke tolo bonde lege duasa ricardo si cariada ba shabe de gebonia Bike no briga ba bende lege de boria talabasha rakita la baba dia baba deisha matosi kata kida katamba kada kadash rakanda dia baba kanda la bobodush rakande le de 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 bedesh lambra kata la baba dasha rada la balala lord make me make me rooted grounded and founded in the center of your will this year yende le bonde de bote de de bakande de bosi balandre beriata Rikata la bosi brada la sota ya. Rakida la bosi brada la seda la babaria toha. Rede de subra baba la babaria baba dasha. Rakata la baba bada la baba dosha. Refete le bebe de le bebe de be suata. Rakata la baba dia baba dia babondia. Rakati ya baba andre gede de bebe dish. Rope gede le bebe dia baba andre gede bosa. Rikata di kadi bala kadi bala baba dia da. Yendele bele 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 rigele bele bele dia babalia 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 ragada la babalia babalia babara baban tala babadosa rapaka di gabala badi gabala dai odi balia babalia boria bande ya kadasha somebody is talking to the lord ragada la bokeri gabole bede zukele le bele bede bele bele bede rubele bede bele guba bandi bede bele gedi borobo di galabali bele bede swa Rafege de 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 de. Rakata la baba la la baba dia baba dash. Rike de 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 de. Makuba la baba kriba la baba dash. Ruba la baba dia la baba dash. Rube de 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 de. Ruba la baba dia baba dash. Ruba de 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 Rantala baba raba da kala baba ria 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 baba la baba da kala 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 baba ibra kala 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 baba la kala kala baba kala kala ria kala 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 baba la kala 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 baba la 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 kala 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 Lord, I ask, uh, cause me to be rooted, to, to be grounded, uh, to be founded uh, in Your will, uh, in the center of Your will, uh, even this year. Uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus, Rako tele baria tele baro kadash, radede gida baba die baba dosha, zege tele bede dosha. Thank the Lord for answers to prayers. Thank the Lord for answers to prayers. Thank you for answers to prayers. Thank you, Lord, for answers to prayers. Be glorified, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we are praying. Lord, we thank you for another time of prayers. Lord, we have asked of you that you empower us, you help us, you strengthen us to be rooted and grounded, to be found.
found them in the center of your room. Because that is more. Help us, Lord, that this year, this is the way we will live. So that the, 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 the indwelling Christ in us will manifest to our environment. Mm. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Blessed be your name forever. In the name of Jesus, we are praying. Amen. Amen. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. I believe that you are blessed by the short exhortation and the prayer. Like I always encourage us, please, this prayer should not end in this prayer meeting. Continue praying it. Amen. I trust God for great things this year. And we're laying the right foundation for those great things. Praise the Lord forevermore. So keep praying the prayer. Um, uh, next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday is another date. Um, 5 p.m. GMT, which is Ghana time. Uh, 6 p.m. GMT plus 1, which is uh, Nigeria time. Amen. I want to use the to also invite you to worship with us at the Prayer Nation, also known as Complete in Christ Church, located at Eastside Access Bank, UPSC branch, Medina is Legon at Accra, Ghana. The service time is 9 a.m. And we're going to be having a good time in God's prayer. It's going to be an exclusive time of the admission of God's word. I want you to make, make, a, make a date with Jesus for this Sunday. I'm not just coming, I'm coming with prayer. My trouble in life is not going to remain the same again. Thank you for your time. God bless you. Thank you.